Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be setting up a four control surface Elevon mix in EFOS. Now this video was a request on YouTube and what was basically asked is imagine that this is a flying wing. We haven't actually got the tail on here. We've got four control surfaces on our wing, so two on each side. Now you could actually set these up so that the outside control surfaces are ailerons and the internal are elevators. But what we want to do in this case is have all four surfaces working as elevons. So what I'm going to do is show you how to set this up. Right, so first of all, let's go through the control surfaces setup. So I'm just using an R8 Pro receiver here. And what I've got set up is I basically took it as a standard flying wing. So in channel one, I've got the left elevon. In channel two, I've got the right elevon. And in channel three, I have the throttle, which is actually just going to this back. What I've done in addition to that, uh, channel four, I've got the left internal elevon, let's say. And on channel five, I have a right internal elevon. That's it. Um, nothing else has been done. I've not powered on or anything yet. What we're going to do is set up in the transmitter first. Okay, so we're starting completely from scratch on this. So I'm just going to ignore all warnings and I'm going to go into the model select menu and I'm just going to create a new model. And I want to see what EFOS does first. So what I'm going to do is just go through the wizards and set it up as I want. So we've got one channel for the engine. I'm going to set up four channels for the ailerons. No flaps. No tail. And we're just going to give this a name. And there we go. We've created our mixer in the wizard. So let's actually see what that has given us. So here we can see what the wizard has created and it's effectively a standard uh, Elevon mix, only we're on four channels rather than two. Now these channels are wrong, so we are gonna have to change them. So what we should really do is get on and change that. So what I'm gonna do first off is go into elevator actually, and I'm going to move aileron two off of channel five because uh, we will get a conflict otherwise. So I'm just going to, for the time being, put it on channel 10. And I'm going to choose no to swap channel settings. And I'm going to choose, yeah, we might as well give it the name so it's easier to follow. So I'm going to come back out of here and I'm going to go in and edit the ailerons. So the first thing I'll do is pop down to output two which is aileron two on channel five. Now we want to put this onto channel two. And when it says, do you want to swap settings? We're going to choose yes. We'll pop down to channel six. We're going to put that on channel four and swap settings. And the one that's on channel seven, we're going to put on channel five and swap settings, yes. All right, so now we'll pop back out and we'll edit our elevator. Now we'll go down output two, which is current on channel 10. We're gonna put on channel two and swap settings. No, we'll keep the name that we already have. So yes, we'll clear the name on channel 10 now. Output three, we will put on channel four. And you wanna swap settings? No. And output four, we are gonna put on channel five. Do you wanna swap settings? No. So. Here we go, we have our elevator on all four channels. We can see that going up and down. And likewise, let's pop to the bottom. We can see our ailerons are working on all four channels. So what's that giving us? If we pop into outputs, we should see our all four of our aileron outputs, which would be nice if they were labeled Elevon, which you, we can change that, but we can see them all moving with the elevator and we have two opposites on the ailerons. Now, what you will notice is that they're all going 50%. 
Now, one thing that we really want to do is if we have inboard control surfaces, is that they're not moving the same amount of deflection. We want a little bit less movement as we go inbound. That's one thing that we're going to look at addressing. But first, let's get this hooked up onto the receiver and just finalize this setup. All right, so I've registered the receiver. That's all I've done so far, so we can check out what's happening. So first of all, we need to make sure that our surfaces are moving the correct way. So let's do an up elevator, and we can see we have a, a problem here already. We have two ailerons going up, two going down. And if we do roll, we can see that we are pitching, but two of them are reversed. All right, so let's see if we can get this right. So the first thing that I wanna do is reverse aileron two, because that is going the wrong way. So let's reverse that, that's going the right way. That's also going the right way. Also, I need to reverse, it'll be this one on channel four. <laughs> so we'll invert that. So now we can see for roll, all our surfaces are going the right way. And for pitch, all our surfaces are going the right way. We'll pull back on the stick, all four are going up. Forward on the stick, all four are going down. Right, these two are going up, these two are going down. And left, those two are going up, those two are going down. So there we go, everything is working correctly. Yeah, I don't really see why it's getting swamped. Maybe my battery's a little bit low for it. Other than those issues, which I will try and sort out, everything's working fine. Okay, so different battery, everything's fine. So the battery was getting a little bit low. Right, so that's absolutely fine, but these internal uh, surfaces, we don't really want to move. I mean, from gliders, I think you usually go sort of 33%. So you'd have full out, full on here, then these would be about 66% total throw. If you had even inbound more, you would go sort of 33%. So we're looking at two thirds throw compared to the outside. Now, the way we can do this in here is we can leave the mix as is, and on the outputs, we can just reproduce it here. So all we need to do is if we look at maybe the pitch, it actually looks less, but to be honest, I think that is just <laughs> my uh, ropey control surface setup because I can't actually get everything level with this. But just to show you how easy it will be, let's reduce the maximum down to 66%. And we're gonna do the same with the minimum. So we go down to 66. And then we'll repeat that on aileron four, which is our last one. All right, so there we go. All we've done is reduce the endpoints. So now if I do rolls, you can see the inbound is moving less than the outbound and the same with pitch. So that is working correctly. That is all you need to do to set this up. So again, EFOS with its basic model wizard has pretty much got you where you need to be. The only thing we really need to change is the channel order because it makes no sense at all to have two channels two and four empty. Um, I know that internally EFOS does stick to AETR. So we had our aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, but obviously channel four isn't being used for a rudder. So it should just be able to be used for something else. And it's yeah, a shame also, that it doesn't label the outputs as elevons rather than aileron. But maybe that's something that could be addressed in the future, but the wizard has basically done everything for you. All we needed to do, as I said, was adjust the outputs and also adjust the end throws of the inner two control surfaces. And that is exactly what you want. But there we go, guys. I hope you found this video useful and now you can set up multiple Elevon control surfaces too. So I hope this video has been helpful and I'll see you on the next one. Fly models like you stole them.